All right, praise the Lord, Pastor Steve Sterling, and uh, was working on some things regarding getting results. Uh, people that find themselves in uh, indemnity, darkness, defeat, uh, find themselves uh, boxed in, hemmed in, shut in, so to speak, and can't find their way. Um, the end from the beginning. And that type of thing. We just want to galvanize and clarify some things through the scripture. I think that might help assist and aid one to uh, receive remedial results immediately. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the confirmation of things not seen. In the King James, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the, and the evidence of things not seen. So we have assurance and we have the confirmation. Faith brings assurance and assurance is substance. And we'll point out a little bit about that in just a few minutes regarding faith and how it relates to your necessity or need or circumstance or situation in life. Hebrews 11, 6, for without faith it's impossible to please him. Uh, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who seek him. And the King James it says diligently seek him. So we must give belief to two things. One, that God exists. And uh, more clear than our adversity or circumstance or situation that we're facing, it may seem real to the natural senses and to the natural mind and to the limited mind and to the carnal mind. But in reality, God exists. That is the primary basis by which faith operates must believe that he uh, is, and two, that he's a reward of those who seek him. So there is a seeking of him, knowing that he exists. And this is the plane or plateau that we need to work in and out of, is that God's existence. And because he exists, we can seek him, and we can find him. And when finding him, we'll find the rewards of our seeking. As far as our spirituality it is put to work here, when nothing else is succeeding and nothing is making headway and nothing is uh, consistently, confidently, matter-of-factly stating your status, you can go to faith. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. So when you talk about heart here, we're talking about spiritual heart. And... Um, it says, do not lean on your own understanding, your own reasoning, your own rationale. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will straighten your paths. Thank you, Lord. He can straighten things out in a hurry. We simply have to acknowledge him and trust him and not give way to natural reasoning or natural thought. Because a spiritual being, as we are, have the spiritual power to operate in faith and by faith like God. I mean, or Jesus would not have said in Mark 9.23, if you can believe, all things are possible for the one who believes. 
if you can believe all things, that's everything, is possible. So just because you feel like you're counted out, knocked out, or you're shut out, or you're um, hemmed in, or locked in, or locked up in an adverse condition or situation doesn't mean there's not a way through it and not a way out of it. Hallelujah. Got good news for you. And it's it's not by something you can muster up, stir up, and you can make happen on your own. It's something that's already existing. And the scripture tells us that God gives every man a measure of faith. So we all have a measure. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, By grace you have been saved through faith. By grace you have been saved through faith. Faith procured your salvation. And salvation came because of grace. You had nothing to do with it. God had everything to do with it. God's grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, came to you when you were down and out and saved you. And it's the same way as that faith operates in every other realm, in other, every other level of your life. This is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God not a result of works, so that one may boast. Say there's no boasting in this. It's just God's effect, God's spiritual effect in our natural environment, God's eternal consequence rolling in the middle of our situation of life, giving us what we could never have apart from him. Matthew um, 15 and 28. Then Jesus answered and said, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you as you desire. Be it done to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed immediately. And there's the key. Be it done to you as you desire. What is it that you desire? What is it that you're looking for? What is it that you're longing for? What is it that you're apprehending? What is it that you are uh, searching and seeking? It will be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed immediately. It can happen fast, friends. It can happen that quick. It doesn't take a long time for faith to work. And again, God's given everybody a measure of faith. Measures a little bit. But you don't need much. In Matthew seventeen twenty. It says, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, you say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And, of course, God uh, draws the parallel between little faith, but his kind of faith, and a mountain, and how it can move, and how anything else in your life can move. Financial inde indebtedness or physical impalements our spiritual challenges doesn't make any difference. Hallelujah. But we simply have to ask God. And God will do it. Matthew 21, 22. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Faith is, is something, it's evidence. Evidence of things hoped for. It 
It's the confidence and knowing that what you're praying for will come to pass. St. Corinthians 5, 7. For we live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith and not by sight, not by the natural mind, not by the seeing of the eye, not by the looking in the rational, in the natural, but simply believing God that what he said will happen, will happen if you pray. James 1, 6. For when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. You ask, you must not doubt. But believe. Ask and believe. That's the key. Just ask and believe. And you're going to be somewhat tested at times, but that's okay. James 1, 3. Therefore, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. There will be tests at times. But don't let the test become a turmoil or a trial or a tragedy. But just know that you're moving through the terse and adverse, and the situation is becoming better and better, and the problem is becoming bleaker and bleaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And you know when you pray, you have the petitions that you desire of him. And we must pursue faith at all costs. Pursue faith. First Timothy 6, 11. But you, men of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith. See, faith. Pursue faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. We're called on to pursue faith. There you go. You know, Romans one seventeen says the righteous will live by faith. Faith is a lifestyle. And faith brings supernatural manifestation, supernatural substance into the material it will create for you whatever it is that you're looking for. Hallelujah. I believe it, and I know you believe it. And when you ask in faith, believe you won't be disappointed. Romans 10, 11, as the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be disappointed or never be put to shame. And when you walk in that faith, you take a hold of eternal life. Eternal life brings supernatural residuals. First Timothy six twelve, fight the good fight of faith, take a hold of eternal life for which you were called. when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Faith works eternal dividends. Amen. And again, it's not after natural observation, not with a natural eye. It's the spiritual eye that sees the thing and takes a hold of it and seizes it and calls it its own. And then you have ownership. And you can have whatever it is that you pray for. 
John 20, 29. Then Jesus said to him, um, Till you have seen me and you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thank you, Jesus. And just do not be afraid. Don't let fear fray you or disillusion you or deviate you. But hold fast to what you pray about. Luke 8, verse 50. Hearing this, Jairus said, uh, Jesus, excuse me, said to Jairus, do not be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. Do not be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. Do not be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. There it is. Faith contacts Jesus. Jesus moves the mountain. It's that simple. Well, God bless you. I hope this is an inspiration. And that God will mitigate, intervene, supersede, and override anything and all things that are contrary to the results that you're looking for.